Alrighty, good morning everybody. This is the last lesson for the week out of the 8th grade book, but 6th and 7th you are uh, getting close to these lessons, so you'll be ready for them. So this is the second part of quotation marks. There's a couple of lessons that go with this, but I'll put them all in one mini lesson for you so that you have them all. So the first topic in there is punctuation. So if you pay attention, you'll see we went over this in the previous one, but just to point out again, um, where you put your commas and your quotation marks in dialogue. So your punctuation goes inside the quotation marks uh, with questions and exclamation points. If your actual text of what your person is saying, so Carl asked, then you have comma quote, what is the homework assignment for today? That actual quote is a question. So the question mark goes on the inside, uh, quotation marks on the outside. There are a few occasions where your um, end mark will go on the outside of your quotation mark. So if the entire statement is an exclamatory sentence or the entire statement asks a question, that's when we would put our punctuation on the outside. So this first sentence, I'm surprised that you can say, quote, there's just capital, I'm guilty. But notice the end mark. This whole statement is an exclamatory sentence. So the exclamation point goes on the outside of our quotation marks just in this sense. If you look at the one above it again, though, Carl asked what he's saying is the question gets the question mark. So be careful with that, that you don't get a little too crazy. This is not unusual. This is unusual when this happens, but it does happen sometimes. So another one, it says, why did you say, comma, quote, notice capital, Karen did it. We have quotations and the question mark goes on the outside. Notice this piece, this quote is not a question, but this entire statement is an interrogative sentence. So we put our question mark on the outside. So that is not common, but it does happen. And you do have a lesson on it, um, at least in the eighth grade material. So um, another thing that is in that lesson is how you do dialogue. So if you notice, when you're reading a book, you see this all the time, but you don't necessarily pay attention to it. Um, but you'll have your quote, what are you eating? Quote, right? With this question mark on the inside, mom asked. And then the dial or the story continues. She saw me quickly cramming something into my mouth. I hit enter. I start a new paragraph and a new person is speaking. So that's what this lesson is going to be pointing out. So muffing, the exclamation point, I choked out chewing and swallowing the chips quickly. So we've got the story. If you look at any of the books you're reading, especially fiction stories that have a lot of dialogue between characters, you'll notice that's one cue as a reader. You know it's a new character because the paragraph shifts. You have a, a new paragraph with a new speaker. So pay attention to that one. Uh, the other one that kind of buddies up with that lesson is other places you might use quotation marks. And it's a real short lesson, but if you can keep track of these two things, underlining versus quotation marks. Uh, if you're going to underline something, make sure it's a long or a complete work. So things like a book title or a play title or the title of a movie or a TV series, not the episode name, just the whole series. The Office, for example, would be underlined. Um, painting, like the actual name of a piece of art, like the Mona Lisa, or other art. It could be sculptures, it could be carvings, it could be other things. But if it's a complete work, um, it gets underlined. Names of ships, right? The USS Indianapolis or sea crafts. Uh, and if we use a number and we write it out as a name, so if I wrote out the number 10, T-E-N, and I used it as a name, I would underline the, the word 10. Quotation marks are when you have a part of a whole. So I have maybe a short story that's part of a whole collection, or I have an article out of a magazine, or I have a poem out of a book, or I have a song title off of an album, or I have a chapter title out of a book. So again, these are smaller things, which reminds me some other big things, right? Names of albums or names of magazines would be underlined because that's our whole versus the little parts of it, the articles, the chapter titles, the song titles, the poem, uh, things like that um, would get put in here. So if it's a piece of a whole big piece, a big work, it gets quotation marks. If it's the complete work or the complete thing or a piece of art or a ship or something like that, it gets underlined. So you do have those lessons to work on. So hopefully these are helpful once they load, if you can see them once they, you might need to download them once in a while, but uh, hopefully these help you get through the grammar material while we are apart. So we will see you soon, I hope.